For years, OLED has been kind of the center of a lot of anxiety for a lot of people, but today, I'm gonna to be telling you about these OLED anxieties and if you should be worried about it. So smack a like on this video, subscribe, and let's get right into today's video. Okay, so everybody who maybe has an LED television or something maybe less conventional than, you know, something more modern, you probably would experience some form of bad black levels or maybe image retention on some of the older plasmas and everybody immediately knows that OLED is self-emissive technology and to that end people are worried they're almost afraid there's this phobia of OLED because of burn-in that's immediately the first thing that enters the conversation now over the last few years Companies have been implementing all kinds of measures and things through logo luminance adjustments, pixel shifters, trying to alleviate and make this not as much of a problem as people think that it is. But is that actually the case? Well, after the last how many years, I mean, I've been investigating this, it's pretty much mitigated down to like not an issue at all. And let me explain. My first OLED that kind of leads me to believe this is from 2019. It is the Sony A8G Bravia OLED. Now I've been using this as a PC monitor, going online, doing ranked PC matches for hours and hours, you know, editing everything you could do on a monitor or on a television I've done on this TV. And I think that for me really helped gauge my comfort in the direction that it has gone now to where I'm not really as worried because I see that with all of that heavy usage, I'm not having a problem. So then of course, I ended up buying another OLED. Now, the OLED that I'm referencing now is my LG C1, and I'm gonna tell you right now, I have more of the same. No burn-in issues of any kind, it's super clean, and I've been using it pretty much the exact same way as I was using before on the Sony AAG. Now, this might lead some people to go, okay, yeah, but those are only two OLEDs. Enter the third OLED that I have right now, the Samsung S95B Quantum Dot OLED. And this is currently right now what I have my PC and my PS5 and Xbox Series X permanently hooked up to for like a daily user. It's my daily driver for pretty much everything that I like to do on the gaming end of things. So for all intents and purposes, it's a gaming monitor and a gaming TV all in one. And I'm talking, I sit there and I mod and I mod and I mod my games up. And it is so cool because I'm able to just use it without any care in the world after seeing how the progression has worked. And again, this isn't some overly emotional or justice or, or purchase justifying kind of rant, if you will. This is established after years of investigating this product and this particular issue with this product being OLED, of course, and burning. And I can tell you, like, every time I use this product, I don't really have that phobia or fear. Now I've gotten it to a point where it's just like every other TV in my house, minus, like, tiles. I'm still very afraid of tiles because I know squares that are left on the screen for a prolonged period of time seem to be what burns in a lot easier. The same goes for logos. So if you're somebody that's doing a lot of stationary stuff, like all you do is watch news 24 hours a day and it never changes, well, then maybe you have to worry. But again, I've been modding on my PC and these windows are still squares and I have to sit there and upload and download files and change assets and things like that around. And I'm telling you right now, you need multiple windows to do all that. And I'm able to do that all from my OLED. And I've been doing this for years on all my OLED TVs. And that is what really let me see that OLED and the anxiety of burning is not as big of a deal. That and every time I do these videos, there's always going to be somebody that's like, yeah, it's eventually going to happen. And which, yes, yeah, sure, eventually, maybe down the road, it could potentially happen. But so far, my Bravia AAG is from 2019 and it's 2023 right now. And I haven't seen even the slightest resemblance of burning and the like. And that's really good because what that means for us is that we can benefit it from some of the best picture quality the world has to offer and we don't have to worry as much about burning the more they learn about how to protect OLED from that. Now again I'm not saying that it's never going to happen to anyone and being completely ignorant and saying people who have experienced it don't know what they're looking at. I'm just simply saying over the years it's not as big of an issue as let's say the 2016 OLEDs or you know something older like that like the 2017 OLEDs. Those really struggled with burn-in because all the modern measures like logo luminance adjustment features were not in place and it was a lot more commonplace to run into burn-in than it is now. Now again of course if you're one of those people that like 
I don't know, using your television as like maybe a social media mobile screen and all you do is sit it up there all day on TikTok, well, the hearts can burn in, the icons can burn in, things like that. But again, for everyday general usage that like TVs are normally used for, like movie watching, TV shows, I see a lot of concerns. Like, will my 4x3 aspect ratios burn in? Will 16x9 burn in? The answer is unequivocally no. That is not a thing that I have seen at all. And I have yet to see one person that can show me tangible proof that it ever happened. I can't find one picture in existence of burned in letterbox bars. I can't find one picture anywhere of four by three bars, nothing. So my big thing here is, is it a problem? Sure. But the anxiety and the fear that holds you back from buying it and keeps you locked into buying lesser TVs, like maybe a Sony X90K series type television with blooming and clouding and all that stuff, you don't have to do that anymore. It's gotten a lot better on the OLED side of things. And this year, 2023, with their brand new QD, Quantum.OLED, you're better off than you were even in years prior as they made it twice as efficient and reliable, so they say, from even prior years. So this is only going to get better as we start, again, harping on it more, addressing it more, and coming together more as a community and saying, hey, we want this fixed, we are worried about this. But after years of investigation, I'm here to tell you OLED is a very viable technology for multiple applications from computer usage to gaming to TVs to movie shows, it doesn't matter. I'm over there watching the New Year's ball drop on an OLED without any burning whatsoever, without any fear. It, you know, I think the whole thing with this conversation is you you really get to the point where you believe you can't do anything on an OLED. You can't watch TV, you can't game. If there's a static logo at all, it's just all over, and that's truly not the case. It's just if there's a static logo on the screen for maybe 24 hours or 48 hours, then we might have a problem. But I've been gaming upwards of sometimes six, seven, eight hours on my longest in sessions with static screens and modding takes endless hours, two to three hours sometimes. Again, I do that multiple times within a week and I don't have any issues whatsoever. And so with that as the case, I'm just gonna call it at OLED has improved to the point where you don't have to worry. And that's the simple takeaway. If you found this video helpful, smack a like on this video. And if you have an OLED story, I'd like to hear from you in the comments down below. And as always, I want to thank you guys so much for watching the number one brand in honesty. Until the next video, see you guys later.